Hello, welcome to Catamount Football with Coach Matt Land. I'm Bill Mayo. In this week's show, we're going to take a look at the first region game with the Sprayberry Yellow Jackets and talk about what we'll do over the bye week and the rest of the upcoming region, region schedule. So stay right here, back with more Catamount Football in just a minute. like a pro at Performance Sports Academy. Get one-on-one -on -one training from former professional and collegiate players, featuring indoor baseball and softball training facilities, ground ball area, three pitching mounds, and four batting cages. Performance Sports Academy is also available for team rentals. Call 706-537-3169 today and train like a pro at Performance Sports Academy. Hi, I'm Dr. Reginald Sherrill. Are you tired of sweaty underarms and dealing with deodorant stains on your clothes? We're performing a procedure called Mirror Dry. It's safe, non-invasive, sweat and odor free, deodorant free. It is clinically proven and FDA approved. I've had the procedure and it really works. The procedure takes about one hour, it's local anesthesia and works immediately. Call our office, Dalton Plastic Surgery, 706-226-3311. 706-226-3311. I was tired of being limited by my knee pain. I fell while riding my bike and needed a partial hip replacement. I was kicking the ball and I felt a snap. From joint replacements to complex spinal surgeries, Hamilton Medical Center's experts know how to get you back in the game. Quality and expertise matter. Hamilton Medical Center is Joint Commission certified in hip, knee, and shoulder replacement surgery. If pain is keeping you on the sidelines, get your life back with the help of Hamilton Medical Center. Coach, let's talk a little bit about the Sprayberry game. I think, obviously, clearly up until this point it's the, of the season, it's by far the best football, most complete yeah. football game we've played. No doubt. Yeah, if, you, if you look at the, the totality of the game, offense, defense, and special teams, certainly all the, all the pieces in play uh, played extremely well. Um, <clears throat> our older kids, I think, really kind of understood the moment, first region game. We really kind of talked to them about that, and I felt like our leadership was very strong. Uh, in the locker room all week long during practice and uh, and then I felt like you know with a leader you got to have a follower and so our younger guys did a great job of stepping in and as we look at the highlights you'll really see some some great individual performances out of some of our younger guys as well as our older guys and I just think it made for a good team win. Comment on the, the <coughs> development of some of these sophomores that are playing on, on really on both sides of the ball but the one that stands out to me is Jameer. Right. He is running so much more confidently now exactly. than he was at the first part of the season. Right. Uh, but the, but a, a lot of those young fellows are developing. Well, I, they are, and I, and I attribute that largely to what we're able to do in practice. I look at what Coach Martinez, how he works with the running back group, and specifically how that running back group not only does their own work, but then they're going to come over there and work with you guys, the offensive line, talking about mm -hmm. pass blocking and hole fitting and stuff like that. Then they'll go with the receivers and quarterbacks and work on pass routes. And then exclusively with the running back, with the quarterbacks, just working on mesh drills. And just look at that full development. And I, I think, the, you know, and you and I have been here a long time, I think one of the things that differentiates our program when we kind of talk with people out of season is how committed we are to fundamentals. Right. Blocking and tackling and running and catching. And, you know, instead of just lining up and we're gonna spend two hours running plays trying to simulate what we're gonna see in the game. I think the other thing though, 
is it is a byproduct of the amount of time that we spend each day going ones on ones. Uh, we don't take any time off of that. We believe that, that, that the best way to get better is to do it in a live, orchestrated fashion. Certainly we're not care careless or reckless with it, but there's only one way to, you know, to really get better, and that is you've got to have contact. Mm -hmm. And uh, certainly we're in a situation now where less and less time is being dedicated to that kind of stuff. And I think the way we're able to carve out some time during practice, even if it's only 10 minutes a day, I think these guys are really beginning, you're, you're beginning to see the fruit of that labor of really working against a very good defense and vice versa, a very good offense. And then also just the simple fact <coughs> that they've now, this is their fourth game that they've yeah, played. Yeah, I mean, so they're getting season, that, literally. They're, they're getting that Friday night experience. Absolutely. And I think the, the encouraging thing, at least I know we have two sophomores on the offensive line, they're going to make mistakes, yeah. but you like to see them don't make the same mistake this week that you made last week. That's and right. we're starting to see that at, at all those positions, whether they're on offense or defense. Well, I, you know, you, you hear it on Friday nights, you hear it on Saturdays, and you hear it on Sundays. And it, and it may not sound like this, but this is what everybody's saying. Two out of three things you can control. You control attitude and you control effort. You really can't control performance. You'd like to think you could, and certainly maybe there are some guys out there, the Tom Brady's of the world, that have the ability to, to will these drives to happen and things like that. But really, it just comes down to hard work, having that opportunity, and being ready. And, you know, when I look at what these guys do, and, and Friday night, I look at how they play, you know, they really put themselves in a position, and I think we as coaches put them in a position to where if you, you know, if you're successful, Great, we'll pat you on the back, but we're still going to critique you. Flip side of the coin, if you do something bad and you're a young guy, nobody's going to eat you. <laughs> you right. know, but what was your effort? Were you going full speed? And if you were, we can correct steps. We can correct, hey, that you're blocking the wrong guy. You can't correct a bad heart. And thankfully, all, right. my, all the guys that are playing for us got great hearts, and it's just fun to coach these guys. I, that, that, that's a really good point, and it's something I, I was going to ask you to, to – to build on a little bit is, is the whole effort thing. I don't know, I mean, there might be a play or two here sure. or there doing the, over the course of the season, but the last time we talked about loafs or, or lack <laughs> of effort, I, I, yeah. it's been, it's been yeah. a long time. And that's really been a, a not, not that it's ever been a tremendous problem here, but it's been a, a right. definite culture shift and change and, and the expectations, I think, uh, that the kids put on each other. I think you said the key word in this culture. We, we, we see that a lot in our society today, and we hear that, that, that I hate to say it, it's thrown, it, that phrase is thrown around very cheaply. And I just think that's a phrase that we take very seriously. I think more importantly, it's a phrase that our players take very seriously. And I think when you look at last week, you talked to, we talked to Coach Thompson about what we do in the off season. We'd have to dedicate a whole show to just talk about what we do j January to June. Right. And then another show of June to August. Um, these guys, I think you're absolutely, I can't even remember the last, sure there's days that we'll get on to, hey we got to play harder, we got to try harder. But loafs, bad attitudes, people, you know, it just doesn't exist. And I think it doesn't exist because there is such a commitment to a guy in the locker beside them. I don't think it's anything with us. Maybe it is. You'd like to think it is. But the reality is, I think it's the peer-to-peer -peer accountability of saying, look, I'm giving my all. I expect you to give your all. And I think it's a magical thing when on Friday night you, you see a team, and you're going to see here in just a minute, beat a team that honestly – if you're betting on horses and all you're doing is just walking through the stable, we're not the, we're right. not the horse to bet on. Right. And you'll see these guys whipping guys play after play, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter, and it's because of that accountability and that culture of, hey, we can't loaf. We've got to give everything we've got. Absolutely. Let's take a quick break. We'll come back with more Cat Mount Football in just a minute. Mike Jones with Carpet Express, and it's time for our annual fall sale. You won't believe how large our selections are on carpet, vinyl, wood, and luxury vinyl plank. Hickory wood, $1.99. Luxury vinyl plank, $0.69. Cents. Carpet, $0.55. Cents. Vinyl flooring, $0.25. Cents. So call, come by, or go online. Use the promotional code FALLSALE and get additional rebates from manufacturers like Shaw and Armstrong. Free coats, hot dogs, come join the fun. 
I was tired of being limited by my knee pain. I fell while riding my bike and needed a partial hip replacement. I was kicking the ball and I felt a snap. From joint replacements to complex spinal surgeries, Hamilton Medical Center's experts know how to get you back in the game. Quality and expertise matter. Hamilton Medical Center is Joint Commission certified in hip, knee, and shoulder replacement surgery. If pain is keeping you on the sidelines, get your life back with the help of Hamilton Medical Center. Hi, I'm Charles R. Hicks, Sr. Hi, I'm Rick Patton. Here at Transformer, we specialize in transmission of automatic and manual. But we also offer all factory scheduled maintenance on all makes and models, along with major and minor repairs on all makes and models. And all of our remanufactured transmissions comes with a three-year unlimited mileage nationwide warranty. We also stock a complete line of BG products to keep your car safe and on the road. From the Transformers crew, God, God bless, bless and, and have, have a beautiful, beautiful day. day. Back to the Catamount Football Show. We've got our coaches interview segment. We've got Coach Patrick Liner. Coach, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. So, had a little change in responsibilities this year. Talk about your uh, position change and, and, and kind of the position group you have now. Yes, sir. So, last year I coached the running backs, um, and this year I've moved to coach the wide receivers. So, uh, it's been a little bit different, but it's been exciting. It's been a challenge. Uh, it's been very enjoyable working with a different group of kids um, that I didn't really get to work with last year. How about the, the differences in coaching guys that are spread out over 53 yards versus a guy that's sitting right in the backfield? It's actually a lot tougher to see just because they're spread throughout the field and you've got outside receivers from sideline to sideline. So trying to see all of them and, and correct all of them is tough sometimes. Um, it's a lot more difficult than when you have the running backs right there behind the quarterback. So talk about this receiver group a little bit. Obviously big changes. We had two seniors last year that that kind of dominated the, the playing time and the snaps, and now we've got, we've got a lot of new guys out there running around. Yeah, just like every position on our team this year, we've got a lot of new faces, and the receiver position is no different. Uh, we've got Gavin D4, who's coming back. He's a senior. He got some playing time, um, some important snaps at the end of last year. Jaden Montgomery's a senior as well, and he got some uh, snaps last year. Chandler Starks is a senior. He stepped into a starting position for us. And then we've got Yendrew Cruz as a junior who's also stepped in to a starting position in our slot receiver uh, role right now. We've got some young kids who are juniors and sophomores that are really working hard and kind of working their way through the JV season. Jamal Macon, Jaquay Flowers, Marcus Simpson, um, and a group of sophomores that are doing a really good job and they're, and they're working to get ready for Friday nights. So comment on, on the development of, you know, like a guy like Gavin last year played JV football throughout the year and, and really developed as that JV season went on and, and led to a bigger role towards the end of the season. Kind of comment on, on that JV to varsity development process for these receivers. I think the development process from JV to varsity is really twofold for our kids. I think the first thing is their JV season is so important to get those reps, those meaningful reps in that competition. But the other way that they get on the field is through playing our scout team during practice. Gavin D4 was our best scout team receiver last year and really helped our defense. Uh, and our defensive coaches came to us and said, hey, he's too good to be on the sideline. And so he found his way into a playing role later in the year. And that's what our kids kind of have to understand. That JV season and that scout team time are how they earn that playing time later on in the season. When you talk about the wide receiver position, people automatically think about catching touchdown passes, catching, catching uh, quick passes or whatever. But talk, kind of comment on there's a whole other side that, that we expect them to do, and that's the blocking. Mm -hmm. Kind of go through that, those responsibilities and, and what you do to, to, to make those guys good downfield blockers. In our offense and kind of the way Dalton's been built forever uh, on offense, you have to be able to block it on the perimeter and the outside. If you can't block, you can't play for us. Uh, we run so many RPOs and screens and outside run plays that if you just can't block, you're just not going to get in um, no matter how talented you are in the receiving uh, area. We practice those things every day. We have multiple drills, work each segment of blocking, and then we'll spend time with Coach Thompson, the defensive backs, working one-on-one -on -one blocking there as well. Um, so we really work to fine-tune fine -tune that craft every single day. 
I think one of the things that's starting to change for, for – I mean, it's been around in college and the NFL for a long time, but is receivers and quarterbacks getting on the same page and adjusting their routes due to coverages. That, that takes a lot of work, right? Yes, absolutely. And it's uh, one of those things in practice during special teams, we'll practice with just quarterbacks and receivers that aren't involved with special teams, trying to get that timing down and the communication down. Um, it's one thing for – the quarterback to see something on the field, but if the receiver doesn't see it as well and they don't communicate it, then it really means nothing for us. So we have to be able to communicate that back and forth and take advantage of what the defenses are giving us because they're so multiple now. We see so many different things that we can't just go into a game anymore with one game plan and one idea because they'll change it halfway through the game as we saw Friday night. All right, before we wrap this up, update us real quick on your family and what's happening there. So uh, we have a, my wife and I have our one-year-old Claire. Uh, she just turned one. Uh, you know, the first week of the season. So she is keeping us very, very busy walking and talking. And so it's been really exciting for us. And uh, we just really enjoy spending time with her. All right, very good. Well, thanks for coming on the show. Doing Thank a great you. job. Looking forward to watching the wide receivers the rest of the season. Stay right here. We'll be back with more in just a minute. like a pro at Performance Sports Academy. Get one-on-one -on -one training from former professional and collegiate players, featuring indoor baseball and softball training facilities, ground ball area, three pitching mounds, and four batting cages. Performance Sports Academy is also available for team rentals. Call 706-537-3169 today and train like a pro at Performance Sports Academy. Mike Jones with Carpet Express, and it's time for our annual fall sale. You won't believe how large our selections are on carpet, vinyl, wood, and luxury vinyl plank. Hickory wood, $1.99. Luxury vinyl plank, 69 cents. Carpet, 55 cents. Vinyl flooring, 25 cents. So call, come by, or go online. Use the promotional code FALLSALE and get additional rebates from manufacturers like Mohawk and Kegolium. Free Cokes, hot dogs, come join the fun. I'm Kelsey with the Chick-fil-A here in Dalton, and we're partnering again this year with the Dalton Quarterback Club to provide you an awesome tailgate meal each home game starting at 5.30. Be sure to be here by 6 o'clock for the catwalk and get your Chick-fil-A meal with Coke products sold separately. Chick-fil-A of Dalton reminds you to eat more chicken. And go be great! The twins came sooner than expected. The nurses cared for me and my baby. I chose Hamilton because I trust my doctor. Hamilton Medical Center is home to beautiful new arrivals every day. Each child and each delivery is unique. Hamilton is prepared with a level three neonatal intensive care unit and comfortable rooms and amenities. Hamilton Medical Center, serving you and your family with compassion, healing, and excellence. Welcome to Catamount Football, and we're continuing with our player interview segment. Guys, welcome to the show and introduce yourself, Thank please. You. Um, I'm Lorenzo Garcia, number 55, senior. I play defensive tackle. Kevin Diaz, senior, 56, de defensive end. All right, Kevin, let's start with you down there on the end. Tell me about being a defensive end for the for the Catamount front seven up there. Well, it's, it's fun reading the big old fat boys tackles. Yeah, uh, my job is to uh, constrict the gap, squeeze, you know, re take dive, um, take pass block, pass rushing. Yeah, I know you guys, you guys get all excited about rushing the passer. I know that's what y'all like to talk about. So, so talk about your, your pass rush move and what's your, what's your favorite way to get after the quarterback? Work half a man and then uh, just rip him off and uh, throw your arm out, ripping his hands off of you and hopefully you get that sack, right. staying low. So you face some pretty, you face some pretty big offensive tackles or, or guards coming at you on pulling. How do you deal with those big guys? I mean, they outweigh you 100 pounds in some cases, right? Yes, sir. Well, Friday night, that guy, that big <laughs> number 78 from uh, Sprayberry probably outweighed you 200 pounds. <laughs> well, you're just shooting your hands and staying low, doing your job, and you'll win. You'll do your job right. So tell me about Started region plays. Tell me about the game Friday night with Sprayberry. Well, the guys was big. He said it himself. But if you work your technique, what coach has taught you, you'll do fine. You'll do great. Did he get his hands on you any Friday night? Oh, if you just extend them a little, 
you, he wouldn't touch you. Yeah. But. All right, very good. Thanks for coming on the show. All right, Lorenzo, Logar, as you're affectionately known yes, by, by everybody around the football program. Yeah, so be. you came over to offense last year and spent some time with us, and then you back to defense. Talk about the transition that you made from offensive line, from defensive line or offensive line back to defensive line. Well, I learned a lot going from offense to defense because, I mean, offense, it's basic that you have to get your hands out. You know, that's, that's, that's the first thing you need to do, put your hands up and then know where you have to go. And then when I came back to defense, I, you know, I adjusted a little bit. I got used to it. And then I just, I guess you could say I learned a lot from offense because of the, the hand placement, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that helped me out a lot. Right. Yeah. So I'm going to ask both of you guys this. This is both of your first year as a, as a playing, playing starting on the varsity. Tell me the difference, the first things that you noticed when you get out there on, on the, against a, the other team's number one offense. Go ahead, Kevin, you go first. Well, stepping up, uh, just doing your job, really, and uh, just being focused. Is it a much faster game than, than oh, yeah. JV, it's, it's than, than what you played last year in JV? A lot louder, the crowd bigger, you know, bigger linemen. But um, do your job and you'll be fine. How about you, Lorenzo? I mean, for me, it's more, everything just, it just it gets up, it goes up in speed, and then the size and then the strength wise, is, everything's different. Mm -hmm. So just having to adjust to that is, was, was actually kind of great. Right, right. Yeah. So t talk to me about Friday night about Sprayberry. It was a great team win, probably the most dominant we, win we've had. You guys get a shout out on defense. You know, how, did, how, how did that game go? How did that feel for you? I mean, I, I enjoyed it. That's just, I mean, they were actually my size, so I actually liked right. yeah, I get my hands on those kids and just tossing them around a little <laughs> bit. All right. Well, very good. Thanks, guys, for coming on the show. Look Thank forward you. to watching all the rest of the season. Stay right here back for more in just a minute. Hi, I'm Dr. Reginald Sherrill. Are you tired of sweaty underarms and dealing with deodorant stains on your clothes? We're performing a procedure called Mirror Dry. It's safe, non-invasive, sweat and odor free, deodorant free. It is clinically proven and FDA approved. I've had the procedure and it really works. The procedure takes about one hour. It's local anesthesia and works immediately. Call our office, Dalton Plastic Surgery, 706-226-3311. 706-226-3311. My job starts in Portland in a month. Mm. Can we find a buyer that fast? I think we're good. Our CBX app tells us who the best potential buyers are. We can pinpoint where the hottest prospects are located, right on this map. Mm. Two cities over. It even lets us set the most accurate price. Wow, it really does all that. It really does all that. <laughs> well, help us pack? <laughs> we're working on that. All right, welcome back, and we continue with our players. Guys, welcome to the show, and introduce yourselves, please. Uh, I'm Jaden Montgomery, number two. I play wide receiver. I'm, I'm a senior. I'm Mal Leonard, number 76. I'm a senior, and I play the offensive line. All right, Jaden, let's start with you. So tell me about, tell me about being a, a, a slot, I guess, is, is, or, but you also play some, some, split, some split in two, correct? Yes, sir. So, so tell me about that, about that role in the offense this year for you. Um, that role is like a big part like of our offense because like we have to block and like catch balls and if we can't do that it's like pretty hard for us to win the game because if they if the defense um do something to like a box like put everybody in a box if we can't block or um 
throw the ball, then it's pretty tough to win the game. One thing, one thing I admire about you is you, you are clearly not the biggest guy on the field a lot of times, but you get out there and stick your nose in the middle of it. Kind of, kind of expound on that a little bit, how that is be, being your size, but out running around with some pretty big guys and getting after them. Uh, I don't like, uh, I don't know how to explain it. Like, I don't try to like make my size, like get in the way with it. I just like try to go out there and play my best. Like, like try to get a win for the team. Now you've made a couple of really good catches here recently, coming right down the middle of the field. JP throws a rocket, doesn't he? Yes, sir. Talk about those plays and, and kind of what was going on. Um, those plays, I was like, even though they all were supposed to be a touchdown play, like when I go back watching on the film, I was supposed to like just like keep my feet, like keep running down the field, but I slowed it down. But if I would have kept my feet, it, was, it would have been a touchdown, just like a stride through the end zone. We got the offense rolling pretty well Friday night against <laughs> Sprayberry. Talk about that game. Um, it was a pretty game. I mean, pretty big game for us. Like our offense and defense did good. Like that was the best I ever seen us like come together as a team. And I just want that to keep going towards the season. It's kind of exciting to see the improvement from the game from from all the way back to the scrimmage through the first game through the fourth game. What do you what do you kind of attribute that that improvement as a in our team from? Uh, I just think like our team is just getting better every week we come out and play like. Every Monday through Thursday, we're just getting better, just re getting ready for Friday. Absolutely. Very good. Well, thanks for coming on the show. All right, Matt, let's talk to you. It's hard to believe you're a senior, right? It's went by fast. <laughs> it's gone by very yes, fast. Yes, sir. So you're, you're one of our versatile guys. You can play center and guard. Mm -hmm. Kinda talk about that, how, how those two, I mean, the positions are side by side, but they're very different, but it probably helps you knowing both, right? Yes, sir. Well, I mean, I started out, I really played center my entire life, and then this year I had to make the switch to guard. And as much as it was different, it was almost the same. Because, I mean, we had been pulling at center a little mm -hmm. bit and pulling at guard, and that sort of helped me out. And I feel like I've been able to get faster and quicker yeah. as a pulling guard. The last two weeks, you've, you've probably played as good a football as you ever played in your life. Yes, sir. And, and really, really uh, done some, did some good things Friday night against Prairie Talk about that game and, and kind of from, from the offensive line perspective and what you saw. Well, I mean, we went out there and we executed what we were supposed to do we dominated from the first snap up front. They were just, they were very quick, but we were stronger and we were more physical. Physical, that's the word yeah. I'm looking for. We were able to drive them off the ball and get a lot of, get a big push for the running backs, Jameer and Ties to make mm -hmm. some, break some big runs. How about, how about the development of those two young guys? You mentioned Jameer mm -hmm. and Ties running backs. This is their first, first varsity experience. How much have they gotten better and, and, and just, more explosive with the football. Well, I mean, it's great to have guys like Jameer and Tyus back there running. I mean, I told Jameer there must be there must be something special about that number one. <laughs> he's I'm doing a good job him. with he's it. He's doing isn't great, he? and the fact he's only a sophomore and has that much to grow. Right. And then Tyus coming in, being a very versatile back, very explosive, great one cut getting up the field. Um, just two great backs might be the best in our region. Yep. So let me ask y'all. Let me ask y'all this question, both of you. That game Friday night, it seemed like. I don't know if y'all could feel it on the field, but on the sidelines, you could just kind of feel the momentum building that, that it was like, I kind of liken it to when you see a snowball, the cartoon of a snowball rolling downhill, just gets big and just starts running over everything in its path. Did it feel that way on, on the field? I mean, could you feel that momentum and, and the kind of building up? But both of you answer. Well, you go first. All right. Um, it was just going out there, getting that first touchdown was very big, and then getting the defense to go out there and get a stop was very big and that just sort of got the ball rolling as you were saying right. and then going out there and then keeping on scoring and just keep piling on them just they quit after a while yeah Jaden, how about you um it was pretty good um like um offense was rolling the defense was rolling we were all catching balls running down the field blocking defense was making tackles it was like everybody was just coming as a unit like we just like had to do it as one all right very good that guys thanks for coming on the show mal before you close it give us a go balls here for the camera Go dogs. <laughs> and we'll be right back in just a minute. Train like a pro at Performance Sports Academy. Get one-on-one -on -one training from former professional and collegiate players. Featuring indoor baseball and softball training facilities, ground ball area, three pitching mounds, and four batting cages. Performance Sports Academy is also available for team rentals. 
Call 706-537-3169 today and train like a pro at Performance Sports Academy. It's football time again in Northwest Georgia. Not a lot has changed at the Oakwood Cafe since we filmed last season. We are still serving the same fantastic food we have for the past 13 years. Our staff is many of the familiar faces you consider family. Our catering department is the best in North Georgia, serving over 400 people daily. We love this community and we wake up six days a week looking forward to serving you your favorite Oakwood Cafe meal with a smile. Oakwood Cafe in historic downtown Dahl. <laughs> Hi, I'm Charles R. Hicks, Sr. Hi, I'm Rick Patton. Here at Transformer, we specialize in transmission of automatic and manual. But we also offer all factory scheduled maintenance on all makes and models, along with major and minor repairs on all makes and models. And all of our remanufactured transmissions comes with a three-year unlimited mileage nationwide warranty. We also stock a complete line of BG products to keep your car safe and on the road. From the Transformers crew, God, God bless, bless and, and have a beautiful, beautiful day. day. Mike Jones with Carpet Express and it's time for our annual fall sale. You won't believe how large our selections are on carpet, vinyl, wood, and luxury vinyl plank. Hickory wood, $1.99. Luxury vinyl plank, 69 cents. Carpet, 55 cents. Vinyl flooring, 25 cents. So call, come by, or go online. Use the promotional code FALLSALE and get additional rebates from manufacturers like Dreamweaver. Free coats, hot dogs, come join the fun. I'm Kelsey with the Chick-fil-A here in Dalton, and we're partnering again this year with the Dalton Quarterback Club to provide you an awesome tailgate meal each home game starting at 5.30. Be sure to be here by 6 o'clock for the catwalk and get your Chick-fil-A meal with Coke products sold separately. Chick-fil-A of Dalton reminds you to eat more chicken. And go be great! All right, we're getting ready to watch the highlights from Friday night. There's our captains walking out. We had an injured captain. That's exactly right. Actually, on Thursday night, he had a reaction and was already kind of penciled in as the starting captain. He's one of our starting linebackers, and so we had to, we had to kind of have a pregame adjustment. Uh, <laughs> That's right. Uh, we thought we didn't know if he was going to be with us up until lunch. Good catch by Gavin there to start the game. Good throw and catch, good protection. Come again, right in the middle there to Yendry. Good job, good protection by the guys up front. Yendry's really developing into a good receiver. This is a great drive for us. Yep, there's Gavin again. Yes, was a great way to start the game. We were getting a lot of different looks by Sprayberry early in the game, getting a four-man, five-man front, three-man front. Seven-man front, yep. nine-man front. They, they were, they were. <laughs> Take your pick. <laughs> they were coming in. I like to see Mal getting down the field there. That's right. You're coming on a little power play. There he is. Uh, nice, nice kick-out block. The Jameer. There we go. Good surge. Good touchdown run. Oh, hello. I didn't see that. <laughs> <laughs> I must great. have cut the playoff before that happened. Yeah. Boop. I wonder why the officials didn't. See that? Yep. He just telling him about it. Yeah. Appreciated him. Come back. So go up early in the game, seven nothing. Great way to start first drive. Another good week of snaps and holes. Defense came out. Defense played a really really good game. Gabe Hill, as we mentioned earlier, because Ethan Carroll was out, we had forced Gabe Hill, one of our other uh, sophomores, into a little bit earlier action and and uh, had to play a little bit out of out of. Uh, inside as well as outside and uh, just did an outstanding job. Kind of added a new little wrinkle to us, gave us a little bit more speed. Great job though overall. Christian Lama continues to develop and become a real work for, work for us inside and uh, certainly those older guys give us a great advantage as well. Here we go, come back on offense, stay off the ground there, Ozzy. Big run right there. Yep, good hard run. Very good hard run. There's Tyus over there, congratulations. I like to see that. That's what those, two back, those two backs are they're, they're for each other, whichever one's in the game. They that's get excited. A, and that's why I think is their strength. I mean, those guys are pulling for each other. They feed off each other. And that's what you want. You can't play this sport anymore with one running back. Right. I mean, if you do, you do it to your own peril. Good jump cut right there by yeah. Jameer. That was all Coach Monty. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Jumping over a box of chicken. That's right. You come with a rollout pass. Good throw, good ch catch by Chandler. Chandler had several good catches. Chandler had an outstanding game. In fact, he makes one catch that he's not going to get credit for because oh, of the holding penalty. Back. And it was amazing. You'll see it, of course, a little bit later here. 
teams are really attacking us on the sprint out. You see those? Yeah. You see that outside linebacker come up and just attack our running back. Yep. And yeah, that's what you should do. You know, you got mm -hmm. a sophomore in there, two sophomores uh, in there, and boom, that's just a way to attack it. A little sophomore. option play. Great run. Staying on his feet. Great run. End up, don't even get him on the ground. That's right. Fourth down play, too. There's a big Ivan called run and Dylan. Good fake, good pass protection. That's, great, right that's there. what I say. The good job right there by Dylan. Yes. Punching. Another big catch by Chandler. Chandler. Stars. Watch Dylan up there. Yeah, keeping that's him great. off of him. That's a good job. Here we go. A little hot snap. Nice recovery. That was actually supposed to be a run. And JP did a nice job of just turning around and Chandler was heads up and found him. And there's a touchdown to Chandler. Chandler's really developed into one, our probably, uh, you know, I hate to say it, you, you, he's a possessional receiver, but notoriously that phrase is used for the guy that can't run away from anybody, right. and that's not the case here. He can, it's just he's probably one of our best route runners and just does a great job of getting open. Very precise. I know we can outrun Doug Smith. Yeah, that's exactly I just saw right. Doug in the end zone right there. <laughs> Stationary. Yes. Great job by our defense flushing out the young man right here and, and, and forcing a quick throw. Number 83 was a good size tight end, so they flipped the ball three and out again. Got a little pressure right here. They came with a blitz and had a couple of guys unaccounted for. Yeah, and this was like third and I mean this was like third and thirty one. Great run by JP right yeah. there. Thirty nine yards, on that I think you got. <laughs> yeah. It goes for about thirty nine yards. You can see they bring the house and JP just rolls right out of the pocket. Good job right there. You saw Gavin with his hands up. He got called That's a great point. two weeks ago, or last week, or whatever it was, for a blindside block, and you've got to leave with your hands. And when he couldn't, he just raised his hands. That's good vertical push by, the, by our line of scrimmage, getting those guys, moving them down the field, and, and letting the back have a choice of where to run. Good job, we, don't, we don't block the backside in there, and that's, that's by design, and he, he finds his... Uh, Taj just finds his way in there That's and right. sticks it in the end zone right here. Yeah, great surge right there by our line. Not sure what number one was trying to do there, but mm -hmm. <laughs> once again, another good snap. Good week this week, snapping from Phil Sheely and um, hold by Alex McGonagall and kicks by Ivan Moore. And he You'll see right here, unbelievable. I mean, almost out of it, completely yeah. off the field to play. Amazing. They wanted to come back and run a little wildcat formation. We go three and out, fourth down here. Our defense fourth and two, they run Wildcat, and a great job by Roger Quintero and Noah Bartu and Jack Ridley. Make a great job right there making the tackle on fourth down. So turn it over, and what well, you see right I here. It's a fake punt, my bad. Yeah, this fake was a, punt, uh, that's right. the worst kept secret in the building. When they yeah. called timeout and came back yeah. out, here, so yeah. it's a fake. It's it fake. doesn't help any when you, the last person you talk to is the guy that's going to get the right. ball. So, yeah, that kind of tell it. Telegraphed. Here but at it that is. point, it's 21 nothing, and you know time, no, you they're trying try. to generate some excitement. Absolutely, get something going. Our tight ends involved again this week, which is a good thing. We like to see that get those guys involved, uh, not only in blocking but also in catching the football. Absolutely, and right there is what it sets up. When you're yeah. able to move those guys on the perimeter, it's going to leave that inside open. Good blocking. Good job. Good push by the line of scrimmage right there. You got some guys that literally just run by the, yeah. <laughs> run by the. It's a good tough run right here. It is. There's big Ivan, taking that run out in front. Good job, very good job, guys. Yep. Like the excitement. Absolutely. Celebrate with your teammates. Right, good job, a lot of linemen downfield trying yep. to help out. That's we've scored. Two, three touchdowns now on this play, right? Yep, yep, yep. This has been weeks. a very good play for us. I think the guys really kind of understand the concept of it, and I think we're doing a good job of doing a lot of different things off of it. Great job right here by uh, Jerry Alvarado. Jerry Alvarado and Kevin just continue to be solid. Logar, Lorenzo Garcia, they do a great job of just holding that wall up and forcing that quarterback to have to get outside. Roger Quintero comes in from the outside, turns it back into those guys. And Jerry does a great job just outlasting the guy. So another three and out. Good punt. 
Jameer got some momentum right here. I thought he was going to get away for a second. I did too. Good return. Come back, good protection. We set this up perfect. First play, it was just it was just a little bit short on our throw right here. and uh, Need a little bit more air under it. Yep, yep, just got to get good it out a little bit sooner. Ozzy and Isaac hustling down the field. Yep, and got a holding penalty right there. Man, um, there's even Big Manny. Yep, Big yeah. Manny down there. I think we were giving him, uh, was it, uh, were we giving him air or defibrillator <laughs> over have, there? He might have needed it. They are going to do a double pass, and there it goes. Great job by Harrison Hughes right there, waiting it out, being patient, coming up and making the play. You'll see it right here, just a good job right here. They're in a keen formation, kind of throws the ball out, releases the H back from the backfield, and just a great job right there. Good discipline, staying home, not, Absolutely. not, not sucking up on the, on the uh, quick screen. 78 was huge. He really was, 6'7", 345. He's a big kid. Good job forcing the kick, and just a great job by Nashir kind of catching it short catch. You know, if he doesn't catch that ball, that thing's back Absolutely. at the five-yard line. The I mean, it's a 25-yard loss. That's exactly right. Nice protection. Yep. One yard short, starting third to see, 13. Starting to see Yendry become a bigger part of our offense. Absolutely. Good, good hard running right here. Absolutely. Jameer went, uh, he had uh, 14 rushes for uh, right at 105 yards, 55 yards on that play right there. Just a great run right there, yep. good quick cutting. And then you see right here, just an explosion through the hole. I think here's at the point where you really begin to see the wheel of the team you're playing really begin to diminish. Yes. I mean, we're still in the, well, at the end, at the end of the first half, 35 yeah. to nothing. Yeah. But a great job by our guys, very focused. We had challenged them, first road trip, to really, really be the end of the game. It felt like we were at that point. Yeah, we'll be back in just a minute with the second half. The twins came sooner than expected. The nurses cared for me and my baby. I chose Hamilton because I trust my doctor. Hamilton Medical Center is home to beautiful new arrivals every day. Each child and each delivery is unique. Hamilton is prepared with a level three neonatal intensive care unit and comfortable rooms and amenities. Hamilton Medical Center, serving you and your family with compassion, healing, and excellence. I was sinking deep Well, we're getting ready to watch the third quarter highlights, and I think it was probably played. These highlights are about real time, yeah, because the thing was over. Uh, just yeah, first time I've ever had this happen. They actually told me that the coach was going to decide after the first series whether or not he wanted a running clock for the second half, and obviously they went three and out again. And you see a great play there by Noah Bartu right there. You see our defensive line just just basically just stopping them and flushing it outside. Good job of Roger Quintero out there. And uh, they put the ball to us and decided to take the running clock at that point. And I'm going to get back on my rant. <laughs> it's, this is the worst rule. And I, you know, if you don't want the, run, the score to be higher, turn the then, clock then just, yeah, yeah. Turn, turn, freeze the scoreboard. Yeah, concede and, at and that let, point. And let's play. You yeah. know, let the young guys play. Because let, let, you know, it hurts your young guys, doesn't it? Does, it does. Absolutely does. They, they work hard all week. They want to play on Friday night. They're playing the JV games, but these guys, the next step we for had them two is, series. is Friday night. Yeah, Offensively, we, got, we had we two, two series, series in the fourth night. quarter. Which was just. Well, we I had don't three know. series though total in the second right. half. Right. But two yeah. series in the in the fourth. Yeah, because we had a rough in the punter That's penalty, right. and that yeah. ended the. After this possession, we wanted to come out with our ones the first possession, and then start some substituting. Didn't even get to do it. No, that's right. So it, it and I'm talking over our, our guys here, but this is a great great job of maintaining their focus and coming out with this first series and, and putting a score on the board. And they had a killer instinct about it. We had yes. talked about that, something that we've got to continue to grow within our team and with young guys, that's something that you know. Uh, they're still got their first in and certainly we have our first in. We, we're committed to always playing your first through the fourth, uh, at least through the fourth quarter, uh, just because you have to from conditioning. I and mean, we can look back at certain teams and certainly you're familiar with right. one that, that, that you know, we, you, you can't take those guys out too soon. 
So it's good to leave those guys in, but you do see some fresh faces begin to start peppering in, uh, even though they keep their first the whole game. Now, 56 right there, you can tell he was a good player for them. He was a good player. And that's the funny thing. I mean, you look at their team. Uh, man, I mean, there's a lot of talent in that group. A lot of good-looking guys. Um, now, this is their coach, new coach, first year. That's right. You know, you, you Who played at Spraybeer. I right. mean, he's one of their all-time leaders, tackle leaders. He's a linebacker. So I'm sure that they will be take this and – Try to build on it as best they can. That's right. And I believe this was a fourth down play, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was, too. And um, we were able to hold them right there, get them off the field, and we see our young guys coming in. our young fellows out there working hard. Great run right here by Jarek. Sure is. There's Hunter Brown, Montana, Idre, Saul, Fabio, and then Harrison Jones, our other. We got six JV line fellas, and, and they, they're playing hard. I like how they play. I like seeing those guys down the field I like right how there. Jarek runs the football. He, yeah. he gets after it. And he had a great JV game the other day, two scores yep. in the JV game. So. There he is again, bouncing off a couple of ball here, a couple of tacklers. Jamal Macon had another solid game. You know, the well. good thing is those guys go in the game, they line up correctly. We don't have, we don't have penalties of them not lining up in the right place. That's right. That, that's good to see. That's important. I mean, that's... Well, that's why you need that Friday yes. night experience with these guys. Absolutely. Great mm -hmm. job right there. Sam Carlson on the tackle. Estevan Broom inside. You see him. Uh, Jackson Wells. Uh, Justin Ketchum. And a big hit right there by John Ross. Uh, dislodges the ball, and we're able to, to get on it. Uh, but a big hit by John Ross. You'll see him coming off the side right here. Boom. And uh, you see that ball. And then, of course, Jackson Wells. And... And uh, I, I don't see who got the recovery there, but just a great job of those guys getting the ball. And That's the end of the game. Good guys win, right? Absolutely. Take a week off and be back in two weeks with uh, some Creekview highlights. and we're partnering again this year with the Dalton Quarterback Club to provide you an awesome tailgate meal each home game starting at 5.30. Be sure to be here by 6 o'clock for the catwalk and get your Chick-fil-A meal with Coke products sold separately. Chick-fil-A of Dalton reminds you to eat more chicken. And go be great! We're back with the scouting report section, but we don't technically have a, well, we don't have a game this not technically <laughs> we don't have a game this week. Uh, but we get a kind of a week to catch our breath and then start games five through ten, uh, and that is the meat of the region schedule. That's and right. the first one is Creekview. That's right. Uh, very good team. Uh, really, I have kind of projected, you know, in the beginning of the season, you kind of do these early rankings, who's what, and all that. And I and I certainly have Creekview kind of toward the top. I know this week. They were they were handled pretty well by yeah, yeah by Sequoia, <laughs> but you can't dismiss the rest of the body of work that they've got in the first three games. So well, that's a giant rivalry too, right? Yeah, Sequoia and yeah, Creekview, I mean, the they're big, right there in each other's backyard. That's right, backyard. big Canton rivalry. So yeah. that's very similar to what we have here. Uh, I think it'll play out over the course of time, but uh, very good, you know, uh, very sound in the running game. Leads statistically in most of our categories, uh, receptions and and quarterback efficiency and runs rushes and scoring. They're they're leading all that. So I think they're a very good offensive team. Defensively, they're a team that switched from a three four to a three uh, three three stack, which we've seen plenty of. Uh, so certainly that should in some way kind of help us, at least from a familiarity mm -hmm. standpoint, particularly with our with our young linemen, as we mentioned during the earlier segment. All right. 
this uh, practice this week, kind of just go back to fundamentals yeah. and then start game week preparation next Monday. Right? Yeah, we actually do have an opponent this week, and our opponent is ourselves. Right. This is maybe one of the most important games because we'll take this week and, and the defense will scout us offensively. We'll scout our defense and kind of talk about it. how would you play us? What, how did teams play? You know, how are they doing us defensively or offensively? And um, it's really a very important communicative time for us because we kind of look at now after four games, what are our tendencies? What are our trends that we like to work with, whether it's blitzing on certain downs or from hash marks or whatever for us? Uh, what do we run on certain downs? Where do, do there's things that we like into the boundary, out of the boundary. So, you know, this is a very important week for us, but it sets up those next six games, which is the meat of the schedule, and ultimately it is our, it is what it's about, and that is winning the region championship, and, you know, we take one game at a time now. All right, very good. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Train like a pro at Performance Sports Academy. Get one-on-one -on -one training from former professional and collegiate players, featuring indoor baseball and softball training facilities, ground ball area, three pitching mounds, and four batting cages. Performance Sports Academy is also available for team rentals. Call 706-537-3169 today and train like a pro at Performance Sports Academy. Hi, I'm Charles R. Hicks, Sr. Hi, I'm Rick Patton. Here at Transformers, we specialize in transmission of automatic and manual. But we also offer all factory scheduled maintenance on all makes and models, along with major and minor repairs on all makes and models. And all of our remanufactured transmissions comes with a three-year unlimited mileage nationwide warranty. We also stock a complete line of BG products to keep your car safe and on the road. From the Transformers crew, God, God bless, bless and have, have a beautiful, beautiful day. day. Hi, I'm Dr. Reginald Sherrill. Are you tired of sweaty underarms and dealing with deodorant stains on your clothes? We're performing a procedure called Mirror Dry. It's safe, non-invasive, sweat and odor free, deodorant free. It is clinically proven and FDA approved. I've had the procedure and it really works. The procedure takes about one hour. It's local anesthesia and works immediately. Call our office, Dalton Plastic Surgery, 706-226-226. 3311. 706-226-3311. I'm Kelsey with the Chick-fil-A here in Dalton, and we're partnering again this year with the Dalton Quarterback Club to provide you an awesome tailgate meal each home game starting at 5.30. Be sure to be here by 6 o'clock for the catwalk and get your Chick-fil-A meal with Coke products sold separately. Chick-fil-A of Dalton reminds you to eat more chicken. And go be great! I was tired of being limited by my knee pain. I fell while riding my bike and needed a partial hip replacement. I was kicking the ball and I felt a snap. From joint replacements to complex spinal surgeries, Hamilton Medical Center's experts know how to get you back in the game. Quality and expertise matter. Hamilton Medical Center is Joint Commission certified in hip, knee, and shoulder replacement surgery. If pain is keeping you on the sidelines, get your life back with the help of Hamilton Medical Center. All right, Coach, we're at the end of week four here and, and got a few folks to thank. Certainly, uh, Chicken Man, Rob Taylor. <laughs> I don't, Captain that, Chicken. That that's might not right. be the right title for him, but <laughs> but the kids get so excited when oh, when, when they show up with those uh, boxes of Kentucky Fried Chicken for the ride home. Well, it's it starts with the bus ride. You know, it's a great experience. We take charter buses when we go on the roads uh, outside of a few local games here that we play. And uh, you know, the you kind of got to have an early day. You get out of class a little bit early. Have your pregame meal around two o'clock, three o'clock. Um, you know, get on those charter buses, and you know that's a special feeling. You you drive down and pull up on the campus, certainly. And reminds uh, you of college. It, it, yeah, and it's a whole lot better than those cheese wagons. And I love the cheese wagons coming to Dalton High School. But you, when right. you get out of when you, when you get out of about a twenty mile range, uh, you like the like you said, it feels like college again. And certainly that's a great experience for our players. Uh, and then one of the treats is is certainly after the game's over with. Uh, our quarterback club not only paying for the buses and providing those for us, very gracious because we have to have a pregame meal so early. Uh, they'll have a box of uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken wait for us. In fact, somebody asked me a question the other night, and I, I, 
I couldn't even in my mind kind of go back. I mean, I was my, my first year playing was 85, was a sophomore. We did it in 85. And so, I mean, I can literally, rec I mean, it, we've been doing this for a long time. A lot of boxes of chicken. But so thankful for Rob Taylor and our quarterback club. They do a great job of providing that for us, Gatorades and waters after the game. And it's just a great opportunity. I mean, it sounds kind of crazy. You want to get back? But it's kind of neat, you know, you yeah. come off the field, you got your red blazers on, and um, you're kind of off to the side, and, and uh, you know, you're just kind of sitting there, and the, you and the players, and, and um, it's kind of it's something you said in the meeting, we were talking about where you play, whether you play Division One, Division Two. you know, yeah. it's really not the lights and all that stuff that you, right. you talk about 30 years later. It's what you talk about in the locker room. What you talk about sitting on the bus, remembering, you know, somebody watching Coach Martinez yeah. eat three or four boxes of chicken. We got to kind of <laughs> or cross, kinda, uh, crossing yeah. a box yeah. of condiments, right. you know. So yeah, so it, there's just those great experiences that you get, and uh, it's what makes it a team. And you know, I just uh, you know, I we always try to thank somebody uh, right here at the end, and it's not hard to come up with people to thank because there's so many people that do so much for our program. But this is just one of the special things about being at Catamount on Friday night and riding those buses and eating that chicken. And, uh, you know, and, and it's a little bit stressful because, you know, you're going to get in a little bit later and you got laundry to do like you had this week and, right. and all that kind of stuff. But it's just a joy to kind of kind of get to the end of the game and you just kind of look out over the field and the stadium starts emptying out and you guys are sitting there and having just a few moments. So, yeah, it, like I said, just very thankful for home that. Home games are special, but it makes away games special. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, right. and like I said, moms and dads and fans waiting for us right there when we come out of the, the gate after the game's over with. And, you know, moms and dads can never be appreciated enough. You know, right. uh, you're really what makes this program special. You're the volunteers in the quarterback club. You're the officers. You're the, you know, you're the, the moms cooking pregame meal and, or not cooking, but serving pregame meal and all that. And I tell you, just really, really appreciate and I should say also thank you to Longhorn. Longhorn does our pregame meal, and they were very accommodating coming over about two hours earlier right. than normal and serving us and uh, uh, the guys that work over there and, and are just outstanding, very professional to work with, and one of our corporate sponsors, and we greatly appreciate them. Absolutely. We'll wrap up like we usually do. We'll be back in two weeks. Same cat time, same cat channel. Go be great.